What's up guys? We are in Peshawar. This is uh, the main city. This is my guy, Zafar. Thank and food you. adventure today? Yeah. Yeah? What's uh, what's so special about this part of the country? Uh, here we uh, mostly uh, meat. Meat. <laughs> Rice. Rice. Uh, kebabs. Mm -hmm. They are the main food. Meat. Yeah, Rice. Uh, kebabs. Uh, kebabs. Yeah. Well, those are things I love as well. And this is a very historical city too. And we're only going to spend one day here, so we're going to make the best of it. This is the oldest bazaar in Peshawar. This is the oldest bazaar in Peshawar. How old is it? Uh, it's around like the Kekila Balaisar and uh, this bazaar is almost the same era. So I think it's almost 1500, 1600 years old. 1500 years old bazaar? Yeah. This is not just food, this is like shoes and, and each and everything. Everything. Food. Yeah. This is like an outdoor yeah. mall. Let's go. A couple of things that really stand out about this market. One is uh, those gates over there. They're the, I guess, boundaries of the market. So every time you enter the market, you go through one of these gates. But as uh, this market continues to expand, it's beyond the gates now. And you look at these, the top of these buildings, you can see how the age, how old and historic the structures are. Not just the shops, but the top. Something that just looks so historical and is preserved. And I'm glad it's still there because looking from just the shops to that, really gives you a sense of history. And the words Kisa Kuwani literally means storyteller. So back in the day when communication was, you know, not texting and voicemails and Instagram, people would travel all around because this is also near the mountains. People would come from across the mountains in different cities and come here and sip green tea, which is what the city is known for, and just tell stories and news about what's happening. So it's like a information hub of the old days. And you see a lot of these old buildings, they, they're still old inns that still exist today where people can come and sip, sip on tea. So just gonna walk around and see what we can find. And right now I feel like the, the parrot from the Fruit Loops commercial, you know, the, the follow my nose guy? And I follow my nose to this. This gentleman is just like frying up big, massive plate of fish. And all the spices that's covering the fish, mixed in with that boiling hot oil. I don't think I have to tell you how good this smells. And this is a fish called raw. It's actually a type of freshwater fish that's related to the carp. And these things, I mean, being from China, like we eat carp a lot. I think that's like one of the most eaten fish in that country. And this thing, like I said, covered in spices. And after it came out of the oil, look at it. They powdered on even more flavor. And all you gotta do is to give it a splash of lemon juice. This is my favorite part of the fish. This is actually a part of the fish that my family used to cook a lot in China. And it's my favorite because all it is, it's just like a little rib, the main skeleton in the middle, and the side pieces break that apart, and that's all good eating. This fish, it's got just pure, flaky, white flesh. A little more lemon juice on the meat. Fried fish will never disappoint this country. I travel the world, and usually, you'll find like, you know, fish and chips and whatever. It's not my favorite thing because all it is maybe is a little salt and butter in the seasoning. But here, I mean, there's like 20 different types of spices on this fish. And the flavor is just unbeatable. So if you're a fan of fish and chips, come here and try this. And you dip it in a little bit of the mint yogurt sauce. They give this to you because sometimes this fish has even too much flavor. Not just the spices, but the contrast and texture from the super crispy skin to the delicate flesh is simply mind blowing. That's my favorite part. The little crispy inner pieces, like right here, this is absolutely my favorite part. It is like literally eating a crispy fish chip. Mm. Don't miss out on the finger licks at the end. This dish deserves at least that much. Get a little crispy fish skin. This thing in your mouth melts. 
crumples and melts. Oh, this is a really good part. Check this out. You see the end piece right here? This has tons of fat. It's all skin and fat. Look at this. Juice just oozing out. This is the part of the fish where you really should put it in some naan because it is just pure flavor. I like to eat it with a little bit of lean meat. Oh man. Melty fat on your tongue, a slight gelatinous flavor, and the crispy skin of the fish. That's like the melty pork belly of the waters. I think we're in for a lot of good food today. A lot of good food. All right, after a little fried fish, fresh pomegranate juice. Ooh, that is tart. Oh, that's really nice though, after you eat something oily, to drink something kind of sour and refreshing. Oh, I feel like I needed this. And they have these fruit stands set up everywhere. You can get orange juice, pomegranate juice, carrot juice, everything fresh. This really is such a diverse market. Like, you can come here and buy everything and fill your hells up with it. I just saw a mountain of something I must put into my mouth. Whoa, look at this. It is a full on mountain of a pot. I mean, you could bathe me in there. And this is a Pakistani plop, a dish I'm very familiar with, but I've never seen it in such shimmering glory. I mean, it looks like a rice and meat Christmas tree. It's just full of rice and beef and nuts and raisins. Bone marrow. Was bone marrow? Yeah. There's bone. It is covered in bone marrow. You hear bone marrow? The next words that should follow that must be, I need that in my mouth right now. In the traditional way of eating this, you gotta come in here and sit on these little seats like everybody else, get comfortable, and dig in. Just smelling this bone marrow on top of this aromatic spiced up rice. This is pure ecstasy. Can you tell me this is just not something that should be on the front page of a magazine somewhere? The tendon coursing through. Let me show you. A little tap from my spoon. You see that juice oozing out? Like you're stabbing into a juicy melon. Look at this. Oh, are you kidding me? This thing, it won't even stay on my spoon because it's just breaking from its own weight. And trust me, it doesn't weigh that much. And this spoonful, look at this. Meat, tendon, bone marrow, rice, chickpeas, raisin. This is my, but one of the first time in my life where my taste buds are like felt abused. Almost too much of a good thing is just happening when I put that spoonful in my mouth. I feel like the bone marrow, you almost don't need it. I'm not saying I don't love you, bone marrow, but the beef itself is so tender. Like you could confuse that with the bone marrow. Let me try to talk about this, although how do you even describe, say, the beauty of Helen of Troy or the gloriousness that is the Mona Lisa? The tendon in the beef, when you start to chew, will flow like a gelatinous river. That beef breaks down as well, putting just an almost surreal beefy flavor. And all that is just covering every single grain of rice that managed to make its way into your mouth. Just when you think like that's becoming overwhelming, the little splash of sweetness from the raisins changes the flavor and texture just a slight bit. It reminds you that, yeah, you're still alive and you are actually eating something this good on this planet. These are my favorite cuts of meat because it's not a simple, like, just pure lean beef or fatty beef. It's fat, is lean, it's tendon, it's marrow. This is like Jingle Ball, where all the top performing artists come together just to make you happy. All right, Jennifer just ate that same plum I've had. What's your impression? Did you try it? No, yeah. Go try it, go try it. Maybe. And the color is so bright orange. Oh my gosh. Nice. nice. nice? <laughs> yeah, I'll buy one of these. Oh, that is so different. You can find any. This corn. This corn. 
Wow. Like cooked and sane. It's got a, such a nice, subtly sweet flavor. These yeah. remind me more of Chinese corn, where the kernels are more like starchy, but when you chew it, it's got a really nice, like roasted flavor to it. Only in Pakistan you'll find a corn, kind of looks and cooks like a carrot. This is called chenaki, and there's boiled mutton soup in these little jars that they're roasting over charcoal. There's not a lot of spices in here, just about the nice mutton flavor. I'm gonna give this a try. So Afghanistan dishes, the common theme is that there's not a lot of seasoning and spices. It's a lot about the natural flavor of the meat. So in here, just a little bit of onions, chilies, tomatoes, and salt. That's it. But look at how tender the mutton is. That's almost as soft as cotton. Oh my god. Chase that with a little Afghan naan. Some people might think that, okay, if there's not a spice in here, it's not gonna taste as good. Not so, my friends. This thing, it just highlights the great flavor of the mutton, and it has this slight, subtle sweetness to it. Oh my God. That is so soft. Look how easily this thing is breaking apart. And lamb is great because it's got a really high fat content. So the meat you're eating, it's never really gonna be dry, especially when it's cooked like this. And it's a little oily on top. That's why you gotta take the nun, dig a little deep with it. Unbelievable. Again, only thing here, tomatoes, onions, and salt. That's it. See, I'm low maintenance. Four simple ingredients. Already making me so happy. And if you do wanna spice it up a little bit, a little lemon juice, you can take a nibble of chilies. I'm totally fine without the lemon juice too, but that completely changes the flavor profile. It's not like it necessarily improved it because it's already got that nice sourness and the sweetness from the tomatoes without the lemon juice, but it does change it up and keeps things interesting. And I like spicy things, so for me, this works very, very well. I'm telling you guys, it's not a lot of gaminess because the mutton that they use here, I mean, this is all like, you know, goats that are, that are feeding off the prairies, off, off the grass. It's not just crowding together, stumping on their own feces, like eating out of feed bag. They're all free range, they're all roaming around, and the flavor does taste amazingly different. And that's the reason. Simple ingredients, local mutton, cook it all in a pot, out comes something spectacular. Having the team try the lamb, right? How good was that lamb? It's good. Really good. Right, Ben? Surprisingly good. Can you imagine? That's just salt. Yeah. That's so crazy, yeah, right? It's tomatoes. It's tomatoes. Tomato, but yeah. Really good. Right now we're in Namek Mandi. This is also known as the salt market. And this place, as soon as you step on, this is one of the oldest food streets. As soon as you step onto this block. All you see is the smoke coming out of all these barbecue grills and all these storefronts. All you smell is just roasted meat. My nose is just breathing in heaven. Heaven is now a fragrance and it's going in here. Now we're outside the world famous the South Chelsea Tika Karagi. And Chelsea literally means stoner. You're like, you know, smoking something. And that's because the person who owned the place, he uh, has some hobbies, you know? But typically people with those hobbies, they tend to know where the best food spots are. So let's check it out. This is the mutton and the sauce. The dish is Karahi. And we had this once before. And Tika means barbecue. So they do barbecue as well here. This is a lot harder than it looks. I mean, he's still making this look really easy. This is the chicken one. That looks good too. All right, very nice. Being behind the scenes and smelling it and see how they're cooking it, that just ups your appetite by so much. This is the founder. Nisar Chelsea. Nisar Chelsea. Yes. Okay. Yes. I heard this is the best. World famous. Oh, mutton karai. Mutton karai. Yes. Smart. Nisar Chelsea. Nisar Chelsea. Nisar of Pakistan. Yes. Okay. Okay.
First thing that came out, and the Sarge Trusty came out and brought me this. This is the lump. When he was showing me this, I'm thinking it's just like fat from somewhere around the goat. I didn't know this, but take a look at this picture. This is what goats look like in around this region, Afghanistan, Pakistan. I'll put it this way. If the goats here had an Instagram account, they would be uploading the emoji of a peach like every single day. Look at this picture. Do you know what I'm talking about? Sorry, kids. I've never seen goats like that. I mean, that thing has a nicer butt than most models. I mean, this is like the Kim Kardashian of goats. And I mean that in the most respectful and nicest way possible because come on, check out that butt on that goat. If you said my butt was as nice as that goat's butt, I'd be thanking you. And this is the meat from basically the goat butt. Look at this, toasty outside, char, crispy skin, and just pure fat. Oh, that about knocked my socks off. Please come here, vegetable. Woo, hang on. Oh. oh my God, first of all, this is insanely awesome. Don't let that reaction phase you. It's just so much fattier than I thought it would be, but it is delicious. This thing you gotta eat with some nut. You can't, you should not try to eat this on its own just like this. It is fat overload. And the toasty part, when you toast fat, when it goes into your mouth, it crunches and it melts. And that's such a satisfyingly lovely sensation. But I feel like this with the non little vegetable, little yogurt, be fantastic. And this right here, I'm still amazed that the only ingredients on this in the last dish is salt. That's it. Ben's gonna try the fat. Oh my God, it's so fat. <laughs> <laughs> so fat. Hey, hey, don't fat shame the goat. This is the most fat of meat thing I ever ate before. <laughs> I'm so giddy right now. Look at this plate of freshly cooked barbecue. Splash of salt, pure salt, roasted over charcoal, and it's just brought in front of you. Look at this lamb chop. Nice chunks of fat, lean meat, great char on the outside. And these little things, the little charred bits of meat on the rib. Mm. Don't forget to get a little intimate and nibble on them. The salt in this country. We just went to uh, the largest salt mine in Pakistan yesterday where it produces a lot of the world's pink Himalayan salt. And we walked in there, you know, such a magical place. So we went back to the hotel, did a little research. People actually go into that salt mine for about 11, 12 hours a day for about a week to treat their illnesses. And somehow there's some kind of magical property in that salt that actually heals people of ailments. I feel the same magical property is applied when you put that salt on any food, like the lamb soup I just had before this, and this barbecue. If you put that soup in front of me, or this barbecue in front of me, it made me guess the ingredients used. And then if you told me it was just salt, I'm pretty sure I'd call you a liar to your face. That was the best part. That crunchy fat, once you penetrate that outer crusty layer, is just pure gusher of a meat bomb. Not a lot of the gaminess that a lot of people fear because the goats here, they're so much better. It somehow creates a deeper flavor profile than just typical regular salt. I'm pretty sure this salt is so magical. You spray some of that stuff on my face, I become better looking. Oh, this piece is the best. Look at that nice little fat crust. That's like biting inside a roasted mutton Tootsie Pop. The crown jewel of bites. It wasn't like in the beginning where it was all fat, but when we tried the fatty pieces, that was a nice combo of crunch, fat, meat, tendon, everything amazing about this in that one bite. Okay, what's insane about this dish is that you saw all the mutton that was put into this and all the tomatoes and it reduces, like it was full and now it's like a quarter of this hot plate. And this thing is one of the must try dishes here in Pakistan. Karahi is amazing. It's like when all that great ingredients is just like reduces and simmers, it concentrates into this little portion right here. I had the chicken last time and this is the mutton. <gasps> I found something awesome. Marrow still inside the bone. That's my special method. Get the mutton bone marrow out. Dip that in a little of the oils. A good day in life usually always involves bone marrow. And the juice and oils here. You got a mix of mutton fat and lean meats with a layer of fat. Fish out green chili. Put this meat on top. 
craziest thing about this dish that the champion was telling me. I still have trouble believing. The only ingredients, the only seasoning in this dish is salt. I would have thought there's maybe a bit of cumin or something that made the fragrance really stand out. Nothing in here besides tomatoes, chilies, the mutton, and salt. That's it. It's cooked 40 minutes, it's steamed and simmered and reduced to this delicious pile of meat. Every single bite you take is spicy, a little sweet. These are pure fatty pieces right here. Mm. That's almost too much fat for me to handle. They should actually call this dish. I can't believe it only uses salt. If I come back to this country, to the city in particular, I'll definitely come back and get this dish. This is the awesome group put together by Find My Adventure. They're the biggest portal, travel portal here in Pakistan. So these guys have been with me for like the past week. Thanks so much. It's been fun. Thank you, thank you. And you get this guy's been with me just today, but really thank nice you. meeting you. Just back from the market, a little reflection on how it's been on this trip so far. We're nearing the end of the Pakistan trip. I think there's two more days, tomorrow and the next day, uh, that I'm flying out of the country. I feel like what's been so amazing on this trip is to really be able to see different aspects of a country. From the bustles of Karachi, to the cultural significance of Lahore, the international vibe of Islamabad in this city right here. And there's still, of course, so much of Pakistan to see and to understand, but I feel really fortunate to have been to these locations and to talk to so many people from all these places and really gauge, at least for myself, how Pakistan is like as a country. And to me, it's pretty unfortunate that Pakistan sort of has a bad rep internationally. Like when I was coming here and my team was coming here, everyone we knew from our parents to our friends have said, oh, be careful, be careful. It's a really dangerous place. And being here and seeing the people from these different regions and areas and cities and backgrounds, my one surefire conclusion is that these are some of the warmest people you can find anywhere on the planet. And just like every country and city anywhere in the world, there are areas that maybe you shouldn't go to, but Overall, like the places that we've been, the general feeling that I've gotten was that, God, I wish more people would know about this place and meet the people and see what I'm seeing and taste what I'm tasting right now. I mean, to go from a centuries old fort to a thousands year old salt mine that apparently has magical healing and cooking qualities to a vibrant international metropolis to walking around exploring an ancient bazaar like we did today. Pakistan really exudes a sense of wonder and mystery and, and warmth that I wish more people would be able to witness. Anyway, as today is one of the last days we we're here, just some random thoughts I wanted to share with you guys. But what an incredible day today. The market was vibrant, it was historic, the food was just, oh, that bone marrow plov. I mean, the first time I fell in love with plov was with Uzbekistan, and this just reignited the passion. And of course, a huge shout out to Find My Adventure for providing the most awesome tour guides. If you don't know, they are the number one biggest tourism portal for Pakistan. And of course, I'll have their information and all the places that I went to listed down below for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.